Hey guys, iHorror Movies here, and welcome to the premiere episode of Let's Play Teenage March Chain of Memories Reverse Rebirth. This is Riku's side of the story, so we will finally get to learn what he's been up to throughout Sora's time in Castle Oblivion. So let's go ahead and just jump right into it, start a new game. And yep, same with Sora, got two files right here. And you'll notice once you get to the actual gameplay with Riku, there's some very no notable differences between Sora and Riku. But we'll get that in a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I gotta say, I like how the game did this. I mean, it gives you, it gives you a chance to play as Sora first, and then you, you're you wondering the entire time where Riku is, and you have the option to play as him once you beat the game of Sora. So, I definitely like that. That's a pretty awesome move. <coughs> mm, excuse me. And apparently we woke up and Riku's sleeping. It's between light and dark. Huh? How does that work? Oh, that's right. Yeah, if you remember Kingdom Hearts 1, Riku did stay behind with King Mickey to uh, seal the door to darkness, and Sora, Dawn, and Goofy were on the other side of it. Yeah, <laughs> he said thorny. Yeah. Can't spell thorny without horny. Never mind. You yeah, can't quite tell who's talking right there. I mean, I know who it is, but obviously I'm not going to say I don't want to spoil anything. So I did a test run, not through the entire uh, Reverse of Birth story mode, but I just played through the first couple worlds of this, just, just so I didn't end up, I didn't have feel for Riku again, so. Is a card? No, it's a little blue, uh, not blue, what the hell, what the hell, blue, purple. It's a purple spinning orb thingy, that's what it is. So you didn't go? <laughs> just this route doesn't have a choice anyway, so <clears throat> And here we go. We should we move around? No, of course not, not yet. New Hollow Bastion's our first world. That's nice. Hopefully the uh, Heartless won't be as hard here as you were when we were here with Sora. Oh my god, those things suck! Yeah, Riku doesn't really know how the cards work and everything, but if you play through Sora's story, and then you're immediately starting this, and you know what's going on, so... Yeah, all this just isn't real, Riku. Yeah, the thing is also with Riku, I should probably mention this real quick, um, Sora, um, when Sora got to Castle of Living, he started out on the first floor, and then went up to the 13th floor, and Riku actually starts on the basement floors of the castle, so this would technically be, I think this is the basement, this is the 12th floor, because, uh, Riku and Sora go to, to all the same worlds, except Riku does not go to, um, the 100 Acre Wood, and Sora does. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, and yeah, can we move around now? Yes, we can. And did the key beginnings already. And yeah, now I want to explain a couple things different between Riku and Sora. First things first, Riku... Oh, wait. You yeah, see, let's go to um, review his deck first. Yeah, Riku cannot build his own deck. He has has a battle using a closed deck with pre-selected cards. And yeah, for different floors you go to, Riku's deck will change. So you can't change it all, but luckily for Castle, not Castle, but I mean, uh, Hollow Bastion, we did a, uh, a good starting deck right here. And generally, Riku will come with an item card in his deck, which would usually be a high numbered potion or high potion, and an enemy card. In this case, we have the Defender, decreased damage when enemies physical attacks. Now, enemy cards, in my opinion, they're a lot more useful with Riku than Sora, because obviously you have all the enemy cards in your deck already, so. I actually, I use them a lot more with Riku than I ever did with Sora. Let's see, uh, map cards, those are all the same. Uh, Riku actually has a rather limited selection of map cards. I mean, Sora has a lot more... <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, Sora has all the uh, Tricom Bounty Rooms, the False Bounty, and all that stuff. Riku does not have those. World cards, like I said, those are all the same, minus 100 Acre Wood. 
And D Report is uh, basically Ritu's version of Jiminy's Journal. Which actually I never really did look at. And yeah, there's Riku's tale, he tells, pretty much just kind of uh, a, a little reminder of what happened in Kingdom Hearts 1, so you can read through that on your own time. I'm, I'm doing this a little quickly, so blah, 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 blah. The card in Nezio, Riku only has a Soul Eater for his card. I don't, and I don't think it ever shows the stats, and I actually don't really know what they are, but it's a good card, so. And let's see, oh, there's more cards? Oh, the Defender, duh, yeah. Yeah, we already know what that does. And then characters, obviously Riku, blah, 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 yeah. That's about it for right now. And anyway, for Riku's status, you notice, yeah, he doesn't have card points, or he can't learn slates. He has, a, uh, has the same HP, attack points, which you can only you can raise one point per every five levels, and then dark points, which we'll worry about those later. But one thing about Riku, he jumps a lot higher than Sora. And Sora would have, Sora wouldn't be able to make this jump right here. And plus, uh, when Riku runs after some period of time, when you stop, he'll actually slide a little bit. And you see those numbers like card break 5 and card break 6. We'll get into that a little bit later. And also, for Riku's, um, you know how Sword has his dodge roll. Just tap right in the right stick and he'll do the little uh, quick jump back and forth like that. That's it, Yeah, that's his equivalent to Sword's dodge roll. And it's, a little, it's quicker than Sword's dodge roll anyway, so it's much better that way. And also, um... Riku does not get Moodle points throughout his time in Castle Oblivion, since obviously he can't change his deck at all, so there's no points. So, you know, no Moodle points, so all the treasure spots are just HP, and that's it. And level up already. You know, when you, uh, whenever you get a chance to do attack boost, do it. It's like I said, you only did one per five levels, so make sure you did it as soon as it pops up. And all these enemies here, you've seen before, so... But when I see you know, playing with Riku and starting out in Hall of Bastion, the enemies give a lot of experience points right off the bat. So, I you can train like crazy. I'm, in two battles, I'm already on level three. So, so this is definitely a really great place to train at the very start of the game. So, yeah, I'll be doing some training here for a while, actually. So, Riku's already on level three. So, yeah, let's go for HP. And then, I'll pretty much alternate between Riku's HP and I'll increase his, increasing HP increasing his dark points and the attack, attack power uh, every time he levels up oh, every five levels <coughs> jeez my throat is annoying right now I do have a bowl of cereal for breakfast already I guess the milk is kinda causing this I don't know but anyway um oh yeah another difference between Sora and Riku um I don't think I actually I never mentioned this with Sora for his stats um yeah Riku has his three stats Sora has his three which were HP, card points, and uh, slates you can only like fully master, or not, not, I don't know, master, but you can only max out two of the three. Like you can max out HP and card points, but not learn every every slate through leveling up, or max out his card points and learn every slate through leveling up, and not max out HP and so on and so forth. For Riku, you can max out all three stats once you get to level 99, which is the highest level in the game, by the way. And yeah, I think that's really about it as far as differences go, at least for right now, anyway. Of course, there's more later on. Yeah, I won't go into those quite yet. And probably, also should mention this too, as far as length goes for this LP, since it technically is an LP anyway, but um... You know, Riku's story is a lot more streamlined than Sora. There's not, there's a lot less like plot and story involved than there was with Sora. And you notice that there's only one, uh, uh, in this world, you, know, you have the three story rooms here. Uh, I think Key Beginnings is right here. Second room's right here, third room's right here. And then after that, you'll see that, um... A lot of the worlds only have one story room, then you don't run into a boss fight, simple as that. So yeah, and use the memos for Prive. But yeah, I think that's really about all the differences I can cover for right now. And of course, I'll be getting more into that later, and I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, do you kinda wanna show off at least one story event? Oh, it's nice, yeah, I can save and shows me how long I've been recording so far. Awesome. And where do I want to go? Yeah, let's go up first. And let's see, what do I want to use here? Let's go... Uh, I'll just use Lasting Days, why not? And, um... Yeah, trying to think of other stuff I can mention. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I already mentioned that Riku jumps a lot higher than Sora. Um... 
and when he runs, he slides after stopping. Um, yeah, that's really about it, so. And see, this should be the first story room. Nope, that's the second one. Crap. Alright. I thought... Oh, wait, no, I screwed up already. Um. Okay, I gotta go to the right. What the hell was I thinking? <coughs> Alright, yeah, let's just use, um, Sleeping Darkness. Why not? And, nah, I did not mean to do that. Crap. Run away, run away, run away, run away, run away. Alright, good. Alright then, guys, so next time, I'll have to stop the episode here. So next time, on Let's Play Teen Mark Standard Memories Reverse Rebirth, we will watch the first story event in Hollow Bastion. This has been the Higher Movie Sign Off, guys. Have a nice day, and thanks for watching.